Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of a Let's Play Monster Train! We are doing a run where we are Stygian Hellhorn. Still got lots of unlocks to go. Um, and we built a deck that's got a lot of sort of cost reduction. We've got the minus two unit cost, and our leader here is minus one spell cost. Um, as a result, I'm going to take the Volatile Gauge, because assuming that this triggers first, and then we get the discount. If it doesn't, I mean, we're screwed. But it's when you draw a card, and this is a persistent effect, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. Um, this drawing deeply should be very valuable with us in our discounts. And in fact, we'll um, probably upgrade our champion, yeah, right over here, to get minus two spell costs, because I think it's going to be worthwhile. Um, we'll take the coins, and we'll go and forge some spell upgrades. Um, hold over so we can cast it a second time. We could put it on Harness the Titan. Now, out of curiosity, no, okay, I can't art, um, upgrade Harness the Titan. It was worth checking, though. I don't think the Ember Stone, the stone does anything for us anymore. I think this is actually a really good thing for us to do. We spam the hell out of that. Um, Power Stone. Um, I mean, from a percentage point of view, it'll do more over here. But we're, especially with the um, the Volatile ga Gauge, we're always going to be casting Crypt Builder. Because its cost is almost certainly going to be like quite cheap. So I think it's worth building it on you. And then we're going to reroll these. Um, remove Consume. There's pros and cons, but costs more. Although the cost part shouldn't matter. So I will do this. Even though it screws up the, the trader's quill. But I think this is going to be better. Because the cost on these is going to get randomized regardless. Um, I might want to leave the extra slot open. I can't think of what might be interesting there. Holdover might be okay. I don't think there's any multi-cost cast or spells. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's plus 10. is just flat. But let's, let's mix it up. Put the plus 10 somewhere else. And then this thing, yeah, doesn't matter. We could get rid of Frozen Lances. Or even the Torches, actually. They have such low base damage. Because wouldn't we rather draw other things? Yeah, we'd rather draw the Crypt Builder. We'd rather draw the uh, Helical Crystals. Yeah. Um, I know it's not targeted, but... I think we're going to do that. I'll save the rest. Because, you know, at the very least, the Merchant of Trinkets would be a very nice way to spend some more. And this is getting pretty expensive, but... I think that's okay. All right, let's go and fight Fell. Phil. Let's just call him Phil. Uh, empowers units with armor. Uh, units have spell shield, so they absorb the next damage spell only. I mean, that's only the statues. It will be kind of annoying. Because they're going to be in front. All right, no sweepers this time. They get the... Uh, yeah, that's that. They get stronger when they die, but that's going to be okay. We'll do this, um, and yeah, we'll throw a sweeper down. That's going to make a lot of sense, because that's going to clear all those guys in a nice, clean way. Um, and can't gain rage. Well, let's put you down. Let's do this to give you a stack of rage. Um, we'll eat two spell shields. That's, I was interested in seeing if that would do that, and then we'll do that. Um, and then... I think I could pop a spell shield. I was gonna say I could put some damage on here, but what's two damage gonna do? Let's pop a spell shield on this guy. Get a little bit of progression there. Because the rest are probably gonna die to auto attacks. Like more easily, more early. Okay, gain some armor, but that's okay. Could do that. Could throw some others somewhere else. Harness the Titan is really good. Uh we've got one incant. Do we have someone else with an incant in our hands? No. So I'll harness the Titan on this floor. Maybe I'll save more encants over there. I'll just put you down here. You can start beating on the statue. Um, actually, we're going to want the uh, the monument on this one. Because of the discounts. You'll pick 30 for my quill. Excellent. I want to save these. Well, I mean, I guess you can put down the armor one. There. I don't know if the rage... Hey, you know what? We'll do it, because we can start beating that down a little more aggressively. That's going to be okay. 
So obviously you're going to hit the front. Um, yeah, I don't have any energy, so it's all going to have to be down here. But we get the incant for the extra draw. I mean, this would kill him. How do I feel about that? This would just be absorbed by the spell shield, that too. I mean, I guess I will. It's saving four damage. Uh, we got to implate. Um, I mean, I clearly should cast it. And you can get some more rage. Just knock off a damage shield over there. All right. I think that's the guy who gains armor when we cast a spell, right? Yeah. But. Okay, I'm going to move up. I know it's a little expensive, but I'm going to cast it here, just to not give that guy extra armor. And then burn through there. Yeah, I'm going to drop some boss damage. So we're not going to get any more card draws over here, but that's okay. I mean, we still get three extra from the Volatile Gauge, so it's not like the other one actually matters as much anymore. It's still nice. Um, yeah, these are both strike effects, so come over here, do it on this floor, so we get another stack of Rage. Um... this kill is... I mean, I dare. None of it matters. Anyway, um, none of it matters here either. I guess, if anything, I'm going to want to smash you. Could have done it this order. I forgot that you still have the spell shield. Um, actually, let me do this. Give you spell weakness. There you go. You got three levels of it. So if we can get it lined up nicely and hit you for one of the, like the 80 attacks or the double attacks or something of that nature, that would be okay. Let's come over here. We're going to harness to give us some muscle. Um, what's the best way of powering through these guys? 50 twice, I mean, that'll kill you. 5 twice doesn't make much of a difference. Yeah, okay. Remove you. And then I think you're going to take it... Yeah, you're going to take the extra from both these hits. 220, nice. Uh, I'll, uh, here. do that, buff you, and then, well, I can't do that anymore, but I, that's probably okay. Oh, I didn't realize we actually had lethal there. Excellent! Six turn boss rush, yeah. Um, more card draw? Well, I mean, we clearly don't need more energy because of the, wait, who are you? Oh, this is, sorry, this is a card. I thought this was the artifact. Um, we don't need more energy because this makes it moot. We might want more capacity, or... I kind of still feel like more card draw is good, because it means more cards in hand for us to buff with the Titan Offering. Send all our mediums on this floor and then apply days. Uh, this actually might be good. This doesn't get our discount from our dude, but it does still get shuffled here, and I think that becomes really important with this gauge here. Um, well, maybe we do want the energy, because it's still randomized. Nothing's, not everything's free. Maybe we have enough card draw that actually plus one energy makes the most sense, doesn't it? You know what? Yes. Although the more card draw, the more likely we are to draw things that say cost zero. I don't know. I can make arguments for both. Um, we can buy trinkets. We have tons of money. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming in this side. So first, okay, first we're going to gain an artifact. Incants trigger second time. Friendly units enter with rage three. Okay, well, we're going to go on the doubling of incants. Not that we have that many, but I kind of wish we'd lean in on the incant. We got the rage one, we got the draw, which just means he'll he'll get eaten faster. But on the other hand, the faster draw. So really, we only have one permanent incant, which is this one here. Rage three. If they came in with rage, what would that do for us? I mean, I don't think it would make much of a difference. We don't have multi-strike. We don't have anything that maintains it. I'm going to grab this. We might end up with some more incants somewhere. Um... Yeah, let me grab this first. So yeah, I'm going to take the minus two modifier. You know what? I, well, we don't can't guarantee it's the same floor. I mean, I love Frostbite still, but let's do this. I like it gives you one puny health. 
Okay, let's buy some trinkets. This we know is good. Oh, we do have the... I should have checked. Maybe I should... Fuck. Why didn't I check first? Because the rage doesn't decay means I would have taken the rage trinket. Silencing units is really good. We can't afford two here. Um, we know that jack strips is actually really nice. Let's grab that. Um, we do have technically a little range generation with this. Yeah, I would have, I should have totally checked the shop first. I forgot that you can, the, the, cause I did think like, oh, do I want to, do I want to pick the artifact or do I want to pick my hero power first? And like, well, it doesn't matter cause neither one can I back out, but I just forget I could have at least checked this and that would have affected things a little bit. I think the silence is more important. I mean, rage is extra damage, but let's be honest. I don't have a problem dealing damage. You know, with our spells, we've got spells for damage. We just need to make sure we don't really die to some bullshit effects. Um, you're going to spawn a bunch of dudes. I'm okay with it. We've got lots of health. Let's grab a bunch of money. Yeah, it's that. This is the thing I mind the least, especially when it comes late like this. Um, because you have, like, it's worth so much money. Um, okay, you will explode for damage when you die. Which is a little annoying, unless there's, of course, no units here, in which case it matters a lot less. How do I want to do this? Keep in mind, all these things are going to explode when they die. I'm tempted. Okay. I'm gonna take out these two. Uh, there's only three HP, but the torches can't do it. This can. Okay, I'm gonna do this. That guy's silenced. So he's not gonna do damage when he dies. I'm gonna try to stack the incants on this floor. Now I'll put you down. So now there's not as many explosions to worry about. So now I'm going to come back down here. Um, what I'll probably do is I'm going to blow you up. Triggering twice. I'm going to blow you up so you don't do five damage over here. Uh, I mean, we may as well do this. Do I want to draw more right now? Because I'm out of energy, right? I think I'm going to intentionally dodge this incant here. This is a little weird, but I think it's going to be for the best. Now, I'm going to accept a bunch of pyre damage. I'm going to do this and keep our, our floor here healthier. Okay. And then they're going to do more damage again when they killed, which is annoying, but I think fine. Oh, I forgot. They had 3 HP. We have the uh, the jack strips. I actually could have uh, set up some kills with the torches. Eh. I want to do this. I'm going to die regardless. I'm going to have to empty my hand a little bit. Or I let this thing die. Okay, hold on. I can do this. Because why not? Yeah, right. You're going to go away, but I'm fine with it. you down and you'll hit that and I'll hit you and then you'll take the damage if I just kill you now it's just gonna hit this will kill you because you got spell weakness do that get the incant that's gonna be okay and then creature wise what do we have left in here yeah, not really anything. So what I'm going to do is I will put the Welder Helper um, right in front. Soak a full blow, even if it's overkill for some reason. 
Um, I could cast more spells here to get more stacks of rage, but I think... Uh, oh, I literally can't afford any spells over here. So... There you go. Done and done. On the silences. Um, you would survive to do damage up there, so we'd like to avoid that. Let me spell weakness this group, mostly to put it on this guy. Um, okay, no matter what, you're going to die to one hit from this. I could kill you with the Helical Crystallis and take less Pyre damage. Right now, the only thing taking damage is the Welder Imp. I guess you're you're not so much of a concern right now. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. And then, yeah, we'll, uh... Torch you. Do this. Do this. And even survive for an extra round, which might be useful for soaking one extra hit from something. Silences didn't really do much over here. None of these are in camps, though, which is nice. Start with this. Uh, there we go. This is exactly 110 damage. Get rid of that punk. And then nothing's alive, so it actually doesn't really matter what order I do things in. Like, here, die. And then... Oh, I should I should use the torch. I mean, I could torch one of my guys, but now it's going to be one less spell that I can use to build up some rage. Now you don't have a lot of hit points. Yeah, right now you would die, but I think. Boom. Yeah, with the double taps that multiply, and the fact that we have holdover on the other thing, like you can see how much damage again uh, means I didn't get to do my torch stuff. And front unit, and fronts, more rage. If you had multicast, it would be crazy. All right, respite. Front unit, front unit, front unit. Can't torch anything, but now I can cast this. Um. Be nice to put some armor on you, but you're gonna die in one hit, which is annoying. And you have no spell weakness, which is too bad. And, but we really have nothing else going on, so it's just, yeah. I think we might just have enough spell damage. Eh, uh, not quite! Oh, well, that's unfortunate, because yeah, he's just going to sweep through. We did him once, so he's got a little bit of frostbite on him. I guess that counts for something. Even spell weakness. I mean, he was gonna die anyway. He was gonna die, I think, just my dudes. Alright, we have tons of cash. Consume Frostbite to everyone. He comes in. He's a creature. And can't apply armor one to friendly units. That is interesting. Now, the, these costs will be randomized. They're not free. Well, actually, this one must normally cost one, I bet why it's in green because it's being changed which means it'll still get the discount from this and always be fairly cheap you know what let's go ahead and do that um this is interesting actually because now the card that says implosion or whatever right impolate deals damage equal number of imps in your deck now i'm assuming that's the current number of imps in our deck so if we imp in a box it should increase the damage that it does right and then all the imps will be free because of this. I mean, this becomes pretty good value with the um, the gauge. Because the, often it'll be cheaper, but I think this works out well. And consume means that, you know, it doesn't track the quill. So no matter what, we're going to get a trinkets. Upgrading units, remove cards, duplicate cards. Um, the pyre health, actually, we could use some pyre health. Um, I think I'm going to left 
And what we might do is try to max out one of our spells. Let's go here first. Well, actually, not that it matters, but technically, higher health. Um, permafrost, so it stays in your hand, who cares? Search tongue, give it magic power and consume. Always nice when you combo that with something that then gets rid of the consume effect. Is it worth it? Do I just want to randomize as is? Well, actually, let's leave. There's a trinket shop here. A little late, I think, for the guild marker. Summon abilities trigger an extra time. Um, so that's basically our imps. Which is two imps, plus really, in a sense, four because of the extra card. Uh, do I do this? Do I take this and reroll? Because honestly, the imps are not bad value with the Ashes of the Fallen. I think we have enough imps that it's worthwhile. I'm going to do this. I'm going to reroll. Pyre room gets lower. Dazes enemies when they enter the pyre room, so they won't attack that. We play the third card of your turn, draw two. Oh, hello. Okay, let me come back. The vapor funnel wouldn't be bad. We haven't rerolled this, though. Um, I think I just take a reroll and then hope we get some better picks. Actually, you know what? Let's throw a surge stone on uh, one of the torches. Yeah, the consume's not bad. If we, especially with the trader's quill, it's a little better. Okay, let's reroll this. Another consume. Remove consume and cost one more. Well, we know that's not a problem, right? Um, how about we do it on deep offering? We don't care about the cost. The other thing we could do is we could upgrade something with even more power and then remove the consume afterwards. But I think I like this. This is going to be a really powerful effect for us. And then with this, uh, what I'll do is I'll put on one of the frozen lances. And then the Ember Stone literally makes no difference in our deck. I don't think we have to duplicate another one of these because they do multiply. Um, do we just want to get another Harness the Titan? Do we want to get another Imp in the box? I could get another non... Well, I don't know if we need another Urchin Spines. I don't think we do. We've got two already. One gets consumed, and I think that's fine with it. We could duplicate the Imp or the thing that summons the Imps. These will multiply. I wonder about Harness the Titan. Or deep harp offering. If we duplicate this, it's more likely that we'll have one that's useful to cast. But really all it's digging for is stuff that's useful by itself. It by itself isn't that useful. So that's why I'm thinking duplicating it may not make sense. The Crypt Builder is good damage, but really the, the Helical crystal, Chrysalis is better. It's 90 damage out of the box and multiplies better with the Harness of Titan. I'm, I'm seriously wondering about this. Although it does make it harder to have multiple actual damage spells in your hand. What if we just duplicate this fatty? You know what? That's probably the best thing we can do. We need we need enough oops to survive so that we can cast our spells, and this applies spell weakness. I actually I think that's the best move for us. I think there was a lot of really viable moves, but I think that's the best. All right, boss fight. Uh, that's fine. Sap doesn't really bother us too much. Our creature damage isn't that significant in the first place. This is our first time where we really haven't been de uh, dependent on, on creature damage. We do the bottom floor setup. Or we set up Tethys on the middle floor and just put uh, the Sylphite on the bottom so that we put some spell weakness to a crew over here, you know? I mean, there's routinely more units in here, and it's actually important to kill units with spells before they damage our units. No, I think we do set up on the bottom floor. Um, we will put you down here. That's still okay. I don't think I'm going to put the real baiter. I'm going to save this for a, um, a totem. So I'll put you in here so that you can at least wipe that out. You get a draw because that was our third spell. I mean, probably that. And we don't have any incant abilities.
Right, and then I can't torch, but I guess that's okay. I mean, I can cast this, but it makes no difference. And I can't torch because I'd, I'd have to torch my own dudes because I don't have a target. Now, you being on this floor is interesting. Um... I'm going to put you up front. You might not last long. You're going to die. Well, you might not. We probably stop you from dying. I'm trying to decide if I want a Guardian Stone somewhere or what. I'll kill you regardless. Put a cell fight down here, make some more room for us. You know what? We'll uh we go ahead and do this. So this will kill you. Put the welder up front here. Gonna make a little bit of room. That's all I'm doing. Um, six. Okay, we want to do this one. Maximize the uh, spell weakness. And then we'll torch you. And we'll frozen lance. Um, yeah, actually, I guess I will do this. I know it's gonna burn through the rage. But that's fine. I'm gonna deep offering on this floor. Um, these are not very high damage spells. I am gonna do this. Put a spell weakness on you. And that one. Sorry, I missed this one as a high damage spell. That is definitely the case. Um, I guess there's no reason to do the torch stuff over here. I guess I'll just hit you with that. Okay. And you're getting some frostbite stacked, which is nice. And then you run over there. Alright, I'm going to do Harness the Titan on this floor to trigger the incants. Hold on. I'm going to Lance. Crypt Offering, so you take 150. And then I'm going to cast a spell here to trigger those. Okay. We have killed him before without him entering combat phase. We may end up doing it again here. We got pretty expensive draw. We have a spell weakness. You're going to take double. Yeah, so, I mean, you're just having you here. Oh, shoot. That, there's a dude in front. I fucked that up. I'm still going to get him. But, um, yeah, it could have been bad, because I, I would have wasted the spell weakness on just one half of that spell instead of both. That's a lot of spells. Or, that's lots of points. Anyway, we've done that. that... Still some mistakes. Uh, getting caught on that sweep right at the start, that was really bad. That was, that was really dumb, um, and could have actually cost us a ludicrous amount of tempo. But, we got there in the end. And again, we're not playing in Covenant mode here, so it's pretty easy. The Jin goes up. Puddle Hex. End turn. Apply Frozen to random card in your hand. Okay. I mean, it, maybe there's more synergy with Frozen effects. You know? So Frozen just means they get retained. Um, it looks like the Frozen status does stay on the card. It's not just, you know, the one time. So this will, you know, over time, well, over the course of a, a particular battle, but over the course of that battle, will make more and more of your deck be Frozen, which opens up some interesting options. But if we get something like, you know, Frozen cards get discounted by one every turn, just like you get in Slate Aspire, that could be an interesting combo. 50% chance to apply spell weakness when, the un when an enemy unit enters your train. That would be nice for these spell-based runs like this. Hellhorn, no extra unlocks or anything like that. Still not too shabby. And, oh yeah, we already had a win at Stiggy in this. 
Maybe what I'll do... Is this a win streak at the bottom? That might be a win streak at the bottom. Or maybe, and that might be the highest covenant that you've done it with. Um, maybe what I'll start doing is manually picking some of these to get some undone combos. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah. Well, maybe next time what I'll do is I'll do Umbra plus Awoken. And then I'll do Hellhorned plus, you know, one of the others just to mix it up. Only 200 more units killed to finally kill the Melting. So it is enemy units killed. Um, so we are, I mean, we're certainly getting there. Folks, thanks for watching another episode. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.